Hi, my name is Albert Dunford and in this tutorial video we are going to talk about state machines and how to set a state machine up to run with PSIM cogeneration. Okay, so we're going to set up a state machine that controls the output of this PWM block for the F28335. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to place a couple sub-circuits. So we're going to place two sub-circuits because we're going to have uh, two states in our state machine. And then we're going to go into event control here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define an input event, uh, which is going to be for the default input, default in. And then we're going to find a, another input event, which is going to be our state transition. So event input uh, one. And then I'm also going to find an output event and put that down here. So this is going to be event out one and I'll define a, a, a I'll define a a um, condition here in a moment um, and then yeah so that's for this one okay so let's go over here and we'll open up uh, this one now and then this is going to be my second state so we need to put an input event uh, we'll put it on that side you'll see why in a second event uh, input one and an output event, and we'll put that on that side. Event output output one. Okay, so I've got um, our first state, I've got our second state, and I've got inside of this, I've got some events that pass in between them. So what, I'll just make these boxes a little bit bigger. Okay, so um, okay, so now I'm going to set up the event connections. So we're gonna go from state one, the first state here, into the second state, and then we're gonna go from this one into this one. So PSIM automatically knows. So if we zoom in here, we can see that this is a square as opposed to a regular port. Let me just put a regular output port. So, sub circuit place output signal port and we'll just put that there for now so a regular output signal port is a circle whereas an event port is a square so PSIM knows that these are event inputs and outputs and so it knows to draw this little red line and, and stick this arrow on the end to simulate to show the transition if we had multiple events we would you know connect all of them up as well but um yeah, this is what we're, we're going to do right now. So uh, this is my default. So we need to define a, a default state. So that is going to be the default event. So we just connect that there. And so that this way, we can connect that in as well. This way, the system knows uh, that this is the starting state. You know, So default, we're here. And then uh, we're going to define a condition to drive this between these two events. OK? Um, and then we're also going to drive this PWM block over here. So um, we've got one output here, so we'll connect that up. And then I'm also going to connect another one here as well. Then we want an output signal port. I'm using hotkeys if you're trying to follow along. Uh, so this is the output port. And we'll label this out as well. OK, so we'll connect those together and and PSIM is smart enough or the event control is smart enough to know that you know each event is only active at a time so the signal or the definition of this um, signal path here is only defined by one of these at a time so it's not like we're going to have a fight here about who's deciding what the value of this node is so this this signal is only getting We'll call this VMA. It's only getting defined by one event at a time. Okay, so now let's define a uh, state transition here. So I'll put up a little source here and we'll just put this a time here and we will make a little label here. And we'll go state, push this down. Okay, so this is a, a critical part. 
if we're not careful with what happens in this instance, this isn't going to work. So the state we're going to so we're going to go from when this is when the state is zero, we'll be in this one, and when it's a one, we'll go to this one. So we'll go over here and we will modify this transition statement. So when state is equal to one, we'll transition. So state equal to one, and then over here, we'll modify this one. So when state is equal to zero, we'll go back state equals zero. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we've got state equal to zero and state equal to one. And then now we need to define um, state. So we need to pass state to at least one of these blocks. So we'll put in an input flag here and we'll go um, and yeah, we'll put it on the top there. So this is going to be input. And then uh, we'll bring this around, we'll wire it over. And now we need to declare this as a global variable. So currently I'm in the event control menu here. And now I need to grab the global variable element. So that's in simcoder and global variable here. So I'm going to grab this and we're going to place it right here. And then this is where I actually define the variable state. So it's, it's this name that needs to match this name. Okay. This label can be anything where it's agnostic. This label is just a, a, a label. So um, this is the key point here. It needs to be state, state. Okay. So now let's go in and define um, what's happening. So we can, so state, if it's zero, we're in this state. So we can just simply go, um, let's set up a zero to hold here. So this is going to be state that we're using and all that's going to happen is we're going to pass state out and we're going to use that zero to drive the VMA. So this will be giving us zeros over here and we'll put a voltage signal over here as well as so the VMA and this is the PWM, PWM. Okay. And then when we come to this, we can define a constant duty cycle. So let's point this to 0 0.5 and then connect it to a zero to hold. And this is going to be 10K as well. Okay, so our duty cycle will be zero when we're in this first state, and it's going to be 50% when we're in the second state. And then when, it, when we transition out, it will be back again. So actually we can, we'll just keep it as a simple thing for now. So we'll transition states at, at one millisecond, one milli. We'll come over here, we'll do a microsecond and we'll go for two milliseconds. And now we're ready to run this, although I should save it. We need to change this hardware configuration to F233X, which is what we have here, and we should save. And I'm gonna call this Okay, everything is. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so we should see PWM. It should be zero and then it should start up. And then the VMA right here, we're seeing it go transition to one. So that is um, left over from the transition of state. So we got one more cycle essentially at the old state before we the VMA transitioned. So that way we can see right there. Um, now there's other things we can do, um, with, with this. So this is the, 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 the most basic setup. Uh, let me just maximize this. So this is the most basic setup that will work. Now there's a couple key tricks to make sure that, that things make sense. Um, okay. So I've got state now declared the global variable tag over on this side and I've got it all connected up with labels and we can still run this and see that it works. Now the main thing we need to be worried about is we actually need to use state in some capacity inside of this block. So if I disable this element uh, or delete it and then just define 
the duty cycle to be zero, is what we'll find is that if we try and run this now, is that we're going to get an error message. So we, we actually need to use the state variable in some capacity inside of the subcircuit. So we need to do something with the state inside of this subcircuit. Now we don't have to we don't have to trigger the, the duty cycle over here or anything. We could do something like um, like run or stop the PLM. So let's grab up the PLM block here. Um, so we are at uh, stop PLM. So we can grab now the input. Input signal as in. Okay, and then we will. Um, so this is, this is an active high element. So we'll put that in there. And we'll slide this over a little bit. Put the 10k in. So we're going to stop the PLM whenever we end up here. And then in this subcircuit, we're going to use state again to turn the PWM on. And this will be an input. And then we're going to start the PWM. Now the zero to holds are making are there to make sure that we that this is executing at the same rate as everything else. So we're running at 10k and 10k here. Okay, so this now um, will enter this first state, the PWM will be off. And then, um, and so zero will turn off the PWM, and then when we enter this one, we're going to turn it on, and then we can grab this label again and connect it up. And then connect it up. So now we're triggering the state in, and we'll run it, and we should see that it triggers on right away, and then in the, we're off to 50% duty cycle right away. Okay, so that's a, a basic state machine. Uh, there's a lot that can be done here. Um, oh, I should set this up to, to toggle state. So let's uh, set that up. Okay, so here we can see I'm now toggling the state between high and low. And we can run this and we can see we, we're off and then we transition and we're off again and then we're on again. So we're transitioning between the two states, driving the modulation wave for, for this and also turning on and off the, uh, the PWM signal. So that's... Um, another thing that you can do there. So uh, there's lots that we can do done with state machines. You can nest states inside of the state. So we could have a state machine defined inside of here. Um, we can have more than one state. We can have complex logic that defines the transitions between all the states. It's very uh, straightforward to do. Um, one last thing to really uh, focus back in on, if I bring these guys back, is um, we need to declare this default state. Uh, we need to, so that the machine knows where to begin, we need to find these transition between the two states, and the, these need to be, the variables that are used need to be global variables. So we need to have global variables declared, so that's what these tags are for. So anything that's used in these transition conditions needs to be a global variable, and that's this, this tag here. Okay, and then obviously the state machine is smart enough so that we can connect these together out here. Uh, we shouldn't put um, we shouldn't put any blocks in here. For example, this is not good. We should, if we wanted to scale these elements, we should put that block inside of the subcircuit in here. So if we wanted to put that block in, so Anything, anything that we want to put before the two signals join up here, we should be inside of the subcircuit. So this is not right um, at all. We should be putting that inside the subcircuit. Okay, and then obviously anything we can um, put anything we want over here as well. So once, once the, once these these points are, are defined, we can do anything anything we like in here. Okay, uh, so that's it for uh, this video. Uh, I hope it was instructional. Uh, there's uh, information about the state machines in the user manual. So check out the user manual for SimCoder. So the SimCoder user manual. It's a whole chapter that, that covers state machines and have a look in there. There's a lot of good reading in there as well. Okay, so that's it for this video. 
Thanks for watching. Um, if you subscribe, you'll get a, a notification whenever a new video is posted. And uh, you can always let us know if you have suggestions for further videos. Okay, thank you so much. And bye now.